Hello everyone, my name is Marco and today I would like to show you the main features of the electronic lab notebook SciFormation ELN. SciFormation ELN has three main components. The chemical inventory, which allows you to manage chemicals inside of your lab. The electronic lab journal, which allows you to manage your experiments. And a system to manage analytical data, such as spectra or, for example, chromatography or other types of analytical data sets. These three components are very closely interconnected, as we will see in a couple of minutes. So let's begin with the chemical inventory. The chemical inventory consists of two main databases, one for containers and one for substances. A container represents an actual container, such as a glass bottle in your lab, with a certain size and storage location, etc., whereas a substance will hold information such as the structure formula, the CAS number, physical data like the melting point, as well as safety data, but a substance can also represent, for example, um, a mixture of different chemical compounds. We can search for container by clicking on chemicals and then on search container. And as you can see, there is plenty of search criteria that we can use. There would be even more if we open these group boxes here. But for now, let's just use the structure search and search for toluene. So we can enter the structure and you can see that I will use the option contains, which means that we will do a substructure search. So we will get all containers which have a substance containing this moiety. And you can see we get in this case four containers, which will be arranged in this list mode, showing, for example, the most important information, such as the container size, the amount of material that's still available, the storage location, as well as the barcode. I will describe these organizational options uh, in a later video in more detail. For now, let's just click on Tolween, which will bring us to the detail view in which we will get a more detailed overview over this container. Furthermore, as I've described before, data for containers and data for substances is stored in separate tables. But in the case of a container detail view, if you scroll down, you will also always get the detail view for the substance in which you can find such useful information like, say, the CAS number, the density, or the safety information for this particular substance. All right, so this is the chemical inventory, but let's say we actually want to do something with this material. Let's say we, for example, want to oxidize the toluene to benzoic acid. For that, let's create a new experiment in the lab journal by clicking on lab journal and create new experiment. Now, I will not show you all of the functions of this electronic lab notebook. I will just briefly show you how you might uh, proceed if you want to start uh, a chemical reaction. Let's begin by adding a reactant and just to draw the structure of toluene here. And it will automatically find both the substance as well as the container. Now, we also need to enter a reference amount. Uh, this is the amount on which the calculations later will be based. So normally it's uh, the amount of the limiting reagent. Let's say we want to use 15 millimoles of toluene. We enter 15 millimoles into the reference amount and we say we want to use one equivalent of toluene. Uh, this will result in an automatic calculation of the uh, amount, mass, as well as uh, volume of toluene that we need to use. Now uh, we can add uh, the other components that we need for our reaction, for example our oxidant. So let's click on add reactant again and let's search for potassium permanganate here. And we will find potassium permanganate and if we select it, it will show us that we have a container in this uh, cabinet here. And the procedure actually calls for 50 millimoles of potassium permanganate for 15 millimoles of toluene, so we can just enter that here. And as you can see, 
the lab trial will automatically calculate the equivalence as well as, for example, the mass that we need to use in our reaction. Let's repeat this for the other components of our reaction mixture. By the way, when uh, the reaction is completed, these amounts will automatically be subtracted from the amounts that are still available in the corresponding containers, helping you to keep track of your chemical inventory as well. Next, we also uh, need a solvent, in our case water. So we can just, for example, enter it in this uh, search field here and we can find the water. However, in our case, we do not have a container of water, since we can just use the deionized water from the tap. So we can just leave this as other, and we can say we need 70 ml of water. You can see that it will automatically um, use these amounts and fill these fields solvent and amount, and it will also automatically write this under the arrow of the reaction equation. Now we can also, for example, enter 25 degrees for our temperature, and we can, for example, enter one hour for our reaction time, and these values will also be displayed below the reaction equation. Next, we can scroll down, and as you can see, we have two text fields here, one for procedure and one for observation. The main difference between them is that procedure will be copied if the reaction is copied. Uh, however, the observation will not be copied when the reaction is copied. So let's just copy-paste uh, procedure into the procedure field. Finally, we also can add our product here, which is in our case benzoic acid. You will just draw the molecule, and you will see that it will automatically calculate the molecular weight, for example, as well as the mass uh, that would be required for 100% yield. Now we can check everything, and if we are happy with it, we can save the reaction. And now, well, we could just go to the lab and run the reaction. Maybe we can make some observations, and we can enter these observations into the observation. For example, let's say something like that. Now, we can also enter the mass that we got uh, into this field here, and this will automatically we have to take care of the units and this will automatically be uh, calculated to be exactly 66% yield. Finally, after you finished the experiment and purified the product, you probably measured some kind of analytical data, like an NMR spectrum. We can automatically transfer this data into the lab journal by clicking on the auto trans button here. Uh, and this will allow you to transfer datasets from all devices which are connected to the lab journal server. In our case, we just want to transfer the NMR. So uh, if we click on NMR and wait a little while, it will then tell you the transfer is complete. And you will see that in this tab analytical data, there is now an analytical data set. If you want, you can take directly a look using this interactive viewer. For example, you can zoom in a little bit and take a look at the peaks. Uh, but you can also download data, or you can use this function edit on local computer to directly open the spectrum in ACD or Mestranova. So as you've seen, Cyformation ELN offers a powerful combination of a chemical inventory and electronic lab notebook. In the next videos, I will describe these functions in more detail. Thank you for listening and I hope to see you next time.